Hello, glad you could join me today for a webinar on successful interviewing. My name is Trisha at Grace and I'm a career advisor to graduates at the college. Okay, so the webinar should take about 30 minutes. Uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions uh, after the session, if you have any questions regarding the content, um, a booking an interview session with me, my contact information will be provided at the on the last slide. So congratulations, you've landed the interview. So so what now? What to expect? Um, if you've made it to the interview stage, it means that the employer liked what they saw on your resume. And the in, in the interview, the employer wants you to speak about your experience in more detail. So think about it this way. Uh, a resume arrives on the desk or in the computer of an employer, and it's a one-dimensional document. And you are this three-dimensional being. So they want to learn a little bit more about you, and they want to get uh, some information that may be between the lines of, an, of a resume. So your accomplishments, what you've learned from certain situations, um, what you enjoyed, if you were promoted and why, why you're excited about the sector and the work that you want to do. So how you talk about your experience is as important as what you are saying. So remember that your body language and facial expressions count. Be attentive, speak slowly and clearly and smile. Grads sometimes tell me that after an interview that the employer said they didn't have enough experience so that they hired someone else. And my suspicion is that the grad didn't give enough detail about their education and experience. And uh, today we're going to look at how to avoid certain mistakes in interviewing so you are more successful in landing the job offer. So I am going to cover these main, these three main areas of information today, and I'm going to talk about uh, interviewing uh, when you're in person, and also, of course, interviewing in uh, online interviewing or what we call virtual interviewing, which is a little bit more common nowadays. So I'll cover points about both, uh, but in general, they will speak of how to be successful in interviewing, regardless of how you are uh, meeting with an employer. So we're going to talk about the 10 most common mistakes. And then I'm going to look at the top five questions that typically get asked in an interview and how to answer those. And the power of storytelling in interviewing. So the 10 most common mistakes. And I think we should tackle the uh, easy mistakes first that are fixable uh, just by being aware of them. And there is a lot that a hiring manager gets from you immediately upon meeting you. And this is what's called a first impression. So we're going to talk a little bit about what, what's happening in that first impression. So here's typically what mistakes might be made uh, in, in shaping that first impression. So not arriving on time. Um, I think being frazzled because you got lost and arrived late for your interview doesn't really leave a great impression. And so what you want to do is find out where you're going uh, ahead of time. Make sure you understand the route that you need to take, even planning to leave much earlier than you, you think. So um, maybe giving yourself a lot more time to get to where you need to be and then to arrive so that you have about 10 or 15 minutes to kind of get settled in and, and be prepared. Another common mistake is not uh, dressed as a serious candidate. So wearing clothes that look a little bit worn or not pressed, mismatched, the wrong size or uh, odorous. Uh, sometimes when we go in person, uh, let's say, um, you know, it's uh, it, it's been in, your suit's been in storage for a long time, and it's a little musty. Things like that. So I want you to think about preparing your clothes the night before or a day ahead, so that you can air things out, so you can press your clothes. Uh, you really don't want to leave a negative impression because you haven't uh, dressed appropriately. Let's uh, 
consider personal hygiene and you know of course it goes without saying but have a shower the day of your interview so that you're nice and fresh looking um make sure that you your hair looks clean your nails are trimmed and clean uh, you have deodorant ap applied. And, and I say that because, you know, usually interviewing is a very nervous, uh, you're in a very nervous inducing circumstance and we tend to sweat a little bit. And, you know, in your closed environment, uh, again, it can get a little musty. So you want to make sure that you're considering that as well. And so just make sure you're really clean and tidy looking. Um, another thing to consider is shutting off your phone. So show the in interviewer that you're completely present and focused on the interview by shutting off your phone. And, you know, you, you could do that again. It's that 10 or 15 minutes that you have before you start the interview. If you're in person, for example, and just go through this mental mental checklist of those things that you need to to consider. Uh, so that's where you would turn off the phone. If it's a virtual interview, and you're getting all set up, you've got a million things to think about, your camera, your your volume controls, a whole bunch of things you're thinking about, um, is just, again, a mental checklist that you can write out even for yourself and, and that just reminds you to turn your phone off. Not shaking hands properly. Now, this is, of course, when you're in person with somebody, um, you know, the handshake is really important and it conveys trust and it conveys respect balance, equality. So mastering the handshake is really, really important. It's an important cultural piece. Uh, people make decisions about your personality and your character based on this simple gesture. So um, you need to be going web to web and have it a firm handshake, not uh, gripping super hard, but a firm handshake, move it up and down a couple of times, last for one to two seconds. Um, in a virtual environment, where you won't be shaking hands, but you can still convey a sense of respect and trust through eye contact. Uh, so make sure you're looking in the camera as opposed to on the screen. That allows, it looks like you're directly looking into the interviewer's eyes. So think about that. And um, smiling and nodding and following along, all of these things are really important and they can convey that, that respect and trust. Uh, another mistake commonly made is not sending a thank you message. And, you know, it just, when you send a thank you message, it really keeps you in the, the mind of the interviewer. And, and so following up either with an email or sometimes people mail cards. If you do within 48 hours, it just shows that extra attention to detail and your really strong interest in making an impression on them. So it, it, you can send a card or you can email. Uh, it is very professional and it tells them that you really want the job. So include a thank you for interviewing with them, um, that you had the chance to meet with them, that it was great to learn a lot about the company and how you can see yourself doing really well in the role. So that's basically what you might say in your thank you message. A few more other common mistakes that are made. Um, you know, is you're really, you're in that interview to really get the opportunity. And if you really want the job, you have to demonstrate that you're competing as a strong candidate. So be sure you've given the time before the interview to really prepare. And from my experience, um, if you are not properly prepared, you're not going to do nearly as well uh, as when you're you're super prepared. Um, and so what you want to prepare are three things. You want to make sure that you really understand the job posting. What are the skills and experience that they've highlighted in the posting that you can bring into your answers um, and that you should be prepared to mention? So for example, if they've highlighted must be a good team player on a job posting, you know that you should most likely prepare examples of stories when you worked uh, on productive teams and how you contributed to a positive productive environment. The other thing that you should know is the company. So researching a company on their website, uh, using something like Glassdoor to find out what people say about working there. Um, you can do a deeper dive and, and you could actually search for their annual report 
uh, from the reference library in Toronto, for example, you can get a lot of information, inside information about a company. Um, on the website, take a look at more than, you know, you go onto the website and take a look at their team, who they are, where they, what's their background. Look in news uh, as a place where maybe they have uh, information about a launch of a product or an initiative they've started or they've won an award or anything like that. Um, have a look at, at that about us. So look at the about us section too. Have a solid understanding of who they are, what their successes are, if they are a top employer, that sort of thing. So you can bring that into some of your answers. And then lastly, I think it's really, really important and almost most important is to really know yourself. Know what your value is. What are your strengths? What kind of work environment do you do really well in? And this, you know, what kind of style of management do you work best under? Your favorite work experience and why you enjoyed them. You know, really sit down with a sheet of paper and take some notes about those things. Like what, what is the value that you bring? What are your experiences? Where would you like to see your career grow? Are you planning on any professional development? Where do you feel you'd like your skills to grow and get better? So knowing, really evaluating yourself and where you're going in your career. Be sure to also create stories that reflect your strengths and skill sets. Um, where did you develop your skills? How have you used them? Why are they important in the role that you're applying to? So really important, again, just to follow following up uh, with the mistakes is often if you haven't done that preparation, you're not able to sell yourself as well. So once you've prepared, you're going to be more confident. Um, if you are not, uh, if you're too modest and not sharing information, it's it's not as rich an answer as you would have if you've really considered um, all your experiences and the skills and value that you now bring to an employer. So really, Again, preparing is going to allow you to give the details in your answers because often uh, if you're not giving enough detail, uh, the employer can't really get a strong picture of you doing the job. And so detail is awfully important in the answers. And lastly, around some of the common mistakes that are made is not having any questions for the interviewer. So think about, you know, what, what would you like to know about the job? And typically the questions are going to be around the company or around the position. So um, doing a little research on that, what, do you, what would you like to know about the company? Typically, uh, it could be what are some of the challenges the company's, company has been facing? How do they foresee the next, uh, the future um, fiscal year? And what, uh, where are they going to be, where is there going to be growth uh, around the, the job? It could be, you know, what would the job entail on a daily basis? Um, you know, what would a typical day look like? Things like that would be great. And I did say I wanted to touch on online interviewing, which is a lot more common nowadays. And there are some very specific mistakes that are made uh, with online interviewing. One is, of course, bad camera and audio focus. So be sure to do a test run and see how you come across. You want to be in the center of the screen with not too much space above your head. Uh, avoid having to look down into the screen. It makes your face look larger. It can cause shadowing. Um, you want to adjust the screen so you're looking straight on. Uh, sometimes putting, so for example, I've put something under my laptop. So putting something under your laptop as a secure base that gives you a few inches is a really good idea. And then check your audio so that your volume controls are where you want them to be. Another mistake commonly made is unreliable connectivity. And so a bad internet connection is something you really want to avoid. Being choppy or freezing in the middle of an interview is bad news. Speak to your internet provider to access better connection and close. And then if you close off all other windows or internet activities, it will preserve the bandwidth and it will, won't be as choppy. There's less tendency to freeze, things like that. Another thing is your posture, uh, clothing, and language is too casual. So here's the thing. Um, I think, you know, a lot of people tend to think, well, it's only a virtual interview, an online interview. It's not a real interview. And 
Um, you need to really treat it like it's a real interview. Consider wearing a clean and pressed outfit. Uh, think suit or a dress shirt with slacks, maybe a dress shirt with a tie, or um, for guys, for gals, it might be a dress shirt with a sweater or a vest or uh, a scarf or maybe a jacket over. So you really want to look um, as professional as you can. And again, it depends on the sector or uh, uh, the position you're applying to. So, you know, if if you know the kind of culture within that sector, so for example, IT culture, if it's a startup company, these kind of things where maybe that you can get away with, with dressing a little more casually, but casual doesn't mean t-shirt and jeans, you know, you still want to present yourself very professionally. Um, and the other thing is you really want to sit up straight and look straight onto the screen. You don't slouch or fiddle around. So fiddle around means, you know, you're at your desk and there's a temptation you know, to pick up a pen or move some paper around. So try not to do much of that and um, sit up straight and have your eyes, don't have your eyes wandering everywhere, focus on the screen. Watch your language and try not to use slang such as man or like, cool. Uh, keep your language and your tone business-like. There's a tendency again, because you're not face-to-face -face with someone to let your language slip. So be very careful of that. And the other thing is the background distraction. So nowadays, you know, we're really forced to do most social and business interactions in front of a screen, and life tends to be swirling around us. If you can let roommates, family members know that you'll need some quiet time while you interview, you can perhaps, you know, cordon off a space for the time you'll need uh, so that there isn't that distraction in the background. And be sure to use headphones to block outside sounds. Think about minimizing visual distractions uh, too, like a messy or cluttered background. So just uh, again, when you're testing your camera, you can see what you look like. You can test on your own. You can have a buddy and to get some, or a friend or family member to give you some feedback on what you look like when you come up on screen. Okay, so we're gonna look at the five questions that you'll probably be asked in the interview and we're going to talk about how you answer each of those um, in a most effective way. So tell me about yourself is a big one. Why are you interested in working for our company? What are your key qualifications that make you a good fit for this job? What are your greatest strengths that you bring to the role? Where do you see yourself in five years? So these are the five that seem to come up again and again, and they can be asked in different ways, but they're getting at this information. So you need to be prepared to answer these questions. So let's start with the first one. Tell me about yourself. And tell me about yourself really hangs people up a lot. Uh, the three areas you wanna focus on are education, experience, and your skills. Uh, so they don't need to know personal information, they just want, this is basically, if you stick to these three areas when you're constructing your answer, it's the best way to approach it. So many interviews will start with this question or a variation of it. And it's a great icebreaker and it gives you a chance to really shine. So you can add the details that you really want them to know about. As a graduate, maybe start with why you decided to study the program that you did. Mention some of the courses that you really enjoyed and how those courses have prepared you really well for your career. If you were able to complete a co-op, then I would mention that next and some of the responsibilities that you had on the job and what you learned from the experience. And overall, what was the experience like? Always speak positively about your experiences. So um, if you did not have a great experience, you don't want to bring that into the interview. So you're always, um, your answers remain positive. Even if you didn't have, again, a great experience, when you're preparing to answer a question like that, I encourage you to find the good in what you experience and really focus on that. It could be the, the people that you work with. It could be the projects that you were given. It was just, maybe it's applying the soft skills, having to experience uh, a job from, an, from nine to five. So figure out what it was that you really learned from that experience and share that in the interview. And then next, if you have work experience, bring that into the answer and talk about the skills that you've developed and you've used. If 
not in the field, then if, you know, if the jobs weren't in the field that you're applying to, then talk about the transferable skills that you've developed and used. And I would wrap up with some accomplishments that you're most proud of or personal strengths that you bring to the role, such as teamwork, communication is a big one, computer skills, time management, skills like that. Remember to always support your answers with examples. So I've created an example for you. I should have I should have it on the slide, sorry. But I'm gonna just read off the example that I've got here for you uh, in answering, tell me about yourself. I love being creative and writing. Communication skills have just always come really easily to me. And I'm also really interested in consumer behavior and how it's driven by the messaging. That's what got me interested in joining the marketing program at George Brown College. My classes taught me so much about how to brand products and services, as well as how to strategize a marketing plan according to results from analyzing customer activities online through our social media sites. I was fortunate to complete a co-op with a small marketing firm that specialized in digital marketing services. And while there, I learned a lot about people, or sorry, I learned a lot about Google Analytics, search engine optimization, and a dynamic content. My past managers have always highlighted my work ethic as a top value I bring to roles. In this job, I think I could offer my very best and do a great job for you. So there's an example of how you might bring uh, a little bit about your education, a little bit about your experience, and a little bit about your skills into the role. The next question, why are you interested in working for our company, is a very common one. And they really want to know that you've researched them and you know why you're sitting in front of them and how this particular job might fit into your, your bigger career plans. So really do your homework. Research to see if others enjoy working there. So that, again, is using something like Glassdoor, uh, which people can leave reviews about their experience working at a company and their feelings about different things, the workload, the responsibilities, the team. So is it an environment where you feel you can grow and develop further skills? Are they a leader in their sector? Are they a top employer? So we do, there's their top employer report is released by the Globe and Mail every year. And it's not hard to find out if a company's on that list. So it's the top employer list from the Globe and Mail. Um, check that out. But knowing that, you could bring that into your answer. Uh, dig deep on their website for the gold nuggets. So again, as I said earlier, look under news, look under our team, various things like that. And then be very sincere in your delivery. You really should know why you're there and hopefully you want that job. So you want to be very sincere in what, how you express what you know about them. Think deeply about why you'd want to be a part of the company is basically what I'm saying. Oops. So another question that gets asked quite often, what are your key qualifications? So, um, you know, as a graduate, without a lot of experience, it's easy to think you aren't worthy of the job or you're not really qualified for the job. Uh, remember that you have lots to offer. And I know that a lot of grads get stuck with this one too, because they don't feel confident yet to really sell themselves or their skills to an employer. And I'm gonna just share a few things with you. So number one, you know, you do have lots to offer. You're, you are excited about starting your career and you wanna do your very best. So you'll give your very best, and that's really a, a plus. Number two, as a new grad, you come with the latest knowledge in the field, which is often around new technologies, but also new ways of looking at things. And you bring in energy to get your career going and test your skills with a company to boot, so you're eager. Number three, you do have the skills and knowledge. You just came out of school, and all you've been doing is studying and using those skills in a learning environment. So it's all pretty fresh to you and you've, you've learned what you need to know. Some of you have completed internships and co-ops. Um, you know, think about what you can, how you can talk about those in uh, the interview. That's experience. What are your soft skills that you've demonstrated while in school or on previous jobs? Consider all your experiences from your studies to volunteering, work, school projects that you've, that you've participated in. All of these experiences have given you qualifications. 
and don't forget, there will be a learning curve. Nobody expects you to do everything super well in the first few weeks. Those are the weeks where you can really ask questions and find out uh, what's going on. So be patient with yourself and you're, give yourself a break. You'll get better as th at things with practice. So just keep that in mind. So another question that's often asked is what are your greatest strengths? So think about a strong quality you have. Give examples on how you developed and applied the skill. If you've been recognized for that skill in your work or at school, mention that. You could highlight how the skills will be useful in the position you're applying to. If you know the job posting well, and hopefully you've prepared that, you can, you can align your answers to what they are looking for in a candidate. So knowing what are their top skills and strengths they're hoping you will have um, tells you the ones that you should be expressing to them and, and letting them know how you developed that skill and how you used it. Um, make, yeah, so aligning your strengths with the company's needs is really, really important. Be sure to know that job posting really, really well and make a list of the qualification that the job requires. And the skills mentioned, uh, so you can create, you know, whatever they're asking, create your stories around those, those skills. Where do you see yourself in five years? Well, this is one that comes up quite a bit. And as a recent graduate, or even someone who hasn't been working for, for many years, this question can really throw them off. But it's, it's a really good question and can help an employer see if you have thought about how the particular position you're applying to fits into your long-term career goals. If you don't know how the job you're interviewing for fits into your career vision, then there may be a chance that you won't stick around in the role for very long. And they know this and hiring is expensive. So it's a question to get a sense of, have you thought about the role and its importance in the way your career will develop? Most, most employers, they want to hire someone who has reflected on their career and has considered setting goals to get where they want to be. So think about your career. What skills do you want to develop over the next few years? How would you like to develop them? Do you see this job opportunity allowing you to build on certain skills you'll need to have as you move through your career? And then talk about that. Another question, uh, why should we hire you? So this is the question you need to prepare for from the very beginning. What makes you the best candidate? Why choose you over someone else? Sometimes you may not be the best accountant, you may not be the best graphic designer or marketing coordinator, but you have something that makes you a great addition to a team. You are positive, for example, or hardworking, you're deadline driven. You love the sector and want to make a difference. So, you know, sometimes you're you're competing in an environment where everyone may have basically the same skills as you. Uh, so you can do the job. But what makes you exceptional? What are the things that really make that would would make you stand out in a job? And think about presenting that to an employer. So storytelling is a really big part of interviewing and uh, the STAR method is typically used and it's for answering behavioral questions. And a behavioral interview questions, they're formatted by presenting a situation, inquiring about what action you've taken to respond to something similar in the past and what the result was. So to help you remember and to help you prepare to answer those, Follow the STAR method, situation, task, action, result. So the situation is really where you're setting the scene, the where, the who, and the when. And the task is what was required of you. And the action is what you did, the skills and the behaviors used. And then the result was what, the, what was the outcome? What was the positive result of the action? So you're always looking for a positive result. And even if you don't, here's another thing, if you didn't have a super positive result, it's kind of what you learned from it. So if you didn't, if things don't go your way, another way to answer situations like that is to talk about what you learned from that situation. So let's talk about preparing your stories. Oops. Um, here are the five skills that an interviewer will ask you about. So usually the stories um, are around these kinds of things. So working on a team. 
And the question might sound something like, tell me about a time when you worked on a team that was not very productive. How did you add value? So typically questions that start with tell me about, give an example, uh, how do you typically do something? There, This is where you in, enter into the storytelling part of, of your answers. So um, another question that's typically asked or another skill they try to get at or situation is time management. How, here's an example of a question. How do you typically approach time management when you have projects and assignments due? Another one that they tend to get at is problem solving. So here's an example of what it might sound like. Give an example when you solved a problem or improved on the processes of a task with positive results. Taking initiative is another skill they want you to talk about. So it might sound something like this. When is the last time you took initiative on a project or during an activity? Have you ever initiated an idea that didn't go over very well? So those are the sort of questions that might you might get around uh, initiative, taking initiative. Another one that's very common uh, in behavioral questions is stress related. So how you manage stress. Here's an example. How do you manage your stress when things get close to deadline? So that's how it might sound. But you know, given the different careers you're entering, some careers are way more stressful than others. So you can assume they may be asking questions like that. So knowing the kind of requirements for the job will help you understand how you need to prepare, what sort of skills you need to highlight and prepare for in these, um, and what stories to prepare for in the interview. So what counts in interviewing? Well, demonstrating that you're able to do the job. So the questions that they will ask will get at that. Are you able to do the job? Demonstrating that you have good self-management skills. So having stories that can re you can relate to an employer that talk about your ability to manage yourself. Uh, demonstrating that you'll be a good fit with the team. So those team stories, uh, how you contribute, what the soft skills are that you have developed that help you be a real asset to a team. So these three areas are the areas that typically uh, are, this is what you need to, to think about uh, when you're preparing your stories for the interview. The only way to be successful is to be prepared with great answers that show you are the best candidate for the job. And you are. So there's, here's my contact information. Thank you for joining me today. Reach out to me with any questions or any comments by either phone or email. And I wish you all the best luck. Hope all your interviews are successful ones. Take care.